My name's Stuart King and I'm Labour's parliamentary candidate here in Putney. I was born and brought up in Wandsworth. Um, I'm, uh, I think I'm, it's, hopefully it's fair for me to say that I've got a very long track record of working on behalf of local residents. For eight years I was a local councillor. I was elected to represent the interests of local residents on Wandsworth Council. And for 12 years I've been a school governor in the borough. Uh, I'm a governor at All Farthing School, which is where my sister and I were both uh, educated. My politics are very local. Um, the motivation for me in becoming a local councillor was to try and put something back into the community that I was born and brought up in. And uh, I've got pretty much the same motivation in terms of uh, the reason I'm standing uh, to be, for many of you, your Member of Parliament, if elected. I'm very proud of Labour's record on international development. One of the first things that we did when we were elected in 1997 was to set up the Department for International Development, ensuring that overseas aid and development had a seat around the Cabinet table uh, and had a, uh, a place right at the heart of government. And during the 13 years that we've been in power, we've seen the aid budget treble in real terms. And I think that's the single biggest demonstration of this government, of Labour's commitment to tackling poverty uh, wherever we might find it in the world. And the unprecedented levels of funding that the aid budget has uh, benefited from means that we're now on track to achieve the target of 0.7% of national income being spent on official development aid. Um, and to do so by the target date of 2013. I think we're actually going to go even further and we're going to enshrine that commitment in law so that instead of 0.7% of aid uh, being a political ambition uh, or aspiration, it's actually going to be a legal commitment. But I also recognise that a government can't simply rely on its record in government and we've actually got to put forward our plans for uh, if we're going to be, uh, if we're re-elected, what we would seek to do in this area. And I think the point that I would want to make is that the recession is the great, in my view, the recession is the greatest threat that the aid budget um, faces. I think that there are going to be lots of voters and indeed some politicians who will question whether um, it, the international aid budget should be protected uh, and shouldn't face cuts when politicians will be expected to make cuts to services for people um, in this country. And I understand that argument, but I reject it. We are still a wealthy and prosperous country, and I think we owe it to the poor of the world to, to continue to spend money trying to tackle poverty. In my view, the poorest people from the poorest countries are the least responsible for the global recession and the least able to withstand its impact. And that's why I'm delighted that the Labour government has pledged to protect the international aid budget from any cuts um, when, we, when we come to tackle the economic uh, problems after the election. I've tried to do my bit locally. Uh, I'm not an aid expert, but I tried to do my bit locally. Last year I organised a public meeting at which Gareth Thomas, the International Development Minister, came to speak uh, to talk about exactly these issues, to talk about why it was important that the aid budget was protected. And earlier this year I took a delegation from Humanity First, which is the um, aid organisation that works in uh, over 30 countries. I took a delegation to meet the minister to talk exact to talk about some of the problems they've been facing on the ground and to uh, and to put those points direct to DFID. I'd like to finish um, by quoting from someone who has had a, a sort of a profound impact on my thinking on these issues. Overcoming poverty is not a gesture of charity. It's an act of justice. It's the protection of a fundamental human right, the right to dignity and a decent life. While poverty persists, there is no true freedom. The steps that are needed are clear. Those uh, are the words of Nelson Mandela, 
and I hope that you'll agree with me that it's only with a Labour government that we can make those steps. Thanks very much for your time.